Hi, this is Joe Bull, and welcome to learning about VisualBasic.net. Today we're going to take a look at LINK, Language Integrated Query. It is a new thing, well not so new, it was introduced back in 2008 with .NET Framework 3.5, but many people are still unfamiliar with LINK and how to use it. We're going to introduce LINK to you in this video and then show you actual code where we use LINK to Objects in the next one. So let's get into our learning about language integrated query. I'm going to take you to our PowerPoint and let's talk about language integrated query. Well, what is it? Well, language integrated query is an acronym for language integrated query. And you see the anagram here uh, that gives you the link on that. Now, it was introduced, as I said, with Visual Studio 2008. So it's been around for a little while, and it's part of the .NET Framework 3.5. It works both in C-sharp and in Visual Basic .NET the same way. So if you're working in either language, the code is identical. Now it offers some good things that are not available with other ways to query data. It offers type checking, and especially it gives us IntelliSense support. So as we're keying in into the editor, the IntelliSense will kick in and help us uh, resolve the fields that we want to work with as we're doing our query. One of the things nice about it is it is a simpler common interface to ienumerable objects. Well, what do I mean by ienumerable objects? Well, things like collections, data sets, files, uh, arrays, those are uh, collections and such that we call ienumerable. And we can go through the elements uh, or fields or records related to that with our link queries. So it is a simple common query interface. And let's learn a little bit about that. First of all, we have link to objects. We have the collections, the files, the strings, and arrays. And this is what I'll be focusing on uh, in this particular video and in the next one to come up. Uh, to get you started with understanding how to use Link. You'll find that even if you're a beginner, if you can start to use Link, that it'll make your coding much easier than doing it traditional way. There's also a link to SQL, and this allows us to actually go against an SQL database. It does require, though, that you have a Microsoft SQL Server or a uh, SQL Express version to go against. So there are some limitations with link to SQL. Then there's also link to XML, which allows us to do quick parsing and writing to XML files. And then we have link to ADO.NET datasets. Now those are the primary ones that have developed. And as we come to more recent times, we also have link to entity framework. Link to entity framework allows us to go against not only the SQL um, server database or SQL Express, we can also go against Oracle and uh, MySQL and other uh, different uh, database providers by using the proper uh, providers for link as well as APIs uh, that we might have. So we have seen link develop and broaden and it's something you really need to start to learn about and use it makes your life coding so much simpler and easier to read the code. Now, what is the basic clauses of a link query? We're going to talk about the clauses and the actual query itself. So let's look at the clauses. There is the from clause, and this starts the link query by declaring what's called a range variable and also the data source. So I might say an item in my array for example, would be the from clause on that. So once again, look for the range variable in the data source. Once that's declared, it becomes uh, much easier because the IntelliSense will then start to kick in and make your coding much easier. Then you can have a where clause in your uh, series of clauses to create your link query. This allows us to filter uh, the data that we want to retrieve back. And it will look for a comparison and return those uh, values that we have set up for our selection 
uh, where the comparison ends up being true in our uh, examination. We can also have sorting in our link query with the order by clause. We can order it by ascending or descending, and it defaults to ascending, but we can add the reserve word descending uh, in our selection and reverse the order. And we can have a number of different uh, clauses uh, to accomplish that. We can have both ascending and descending of different fields. Also, what is not listed is some of the aggregate and group functions that are available as well. But we'll focus mainly on the from clause, the where clause, and the order by clause. And the last one we're looking at is the select clause. The select cause is the result set to be returned. It could be a whole uh, uh, element of an array. It could be a field of a record or the whole record. Uh, so there are different ways we can return back what we've tried to query. And the important thing to remember is, unlike SQL, where you start with a select cause, with link queries, we start with the uh, from clause first and end up with the select clause last. So remember, we have the from clause, the where clause for filtering, the order by clause for sorting, and the select cause clause. And these are two are optional. You do not have to have that in your uh, query. Now let's take a look at uh, a selection uh, using those clauses. Here's an example from student in students. Here we see a collection or an array or something here that represents students. We're taking one part of that student and we're saying where in this case the student grade point average is greater than 3.5. We're ordering it by the student last name and the student first name and then returning back our result set of the students that meet the criteria of our where. So this is a simple clause where we see the from, where, order by, and select. Now the actual link query variable is the variable that we're going to use to assign our link query to. And it is an I enumerable of T uh, variable, but yet we do not need to actually declare it as such if we turn on a little uh, compiler switch uh, for our code in Visual Basic. The query variable is not resolved until the process actually executes, for example, a for each iteration. So we can add things and take away things from our data even after we define our query. But until we execute the query, uh, the results are not known what we have. It's called, it's called deferred execution. And when we're looking at the SQL entity framework, we sometimes use the term lazy loading. So we retrieve only the data we need when we need it. Thus, the data can change, as I said, prior to the execution and will be included in the query execution process. Now, as I said, there is a nice way in Visual Basic to make certain that our query variable is of the, the I enumerable type of, of T. Uh, and we can do that by turning on the option of for on or give an actual directive in our source code to tell the compiler that. Now, without that, we would have to be more definitive in defining the variable. But with that turned on, it will resolve for us automatically uh, in the process. If you're using C sharp, you'll know about the var uh, data type. It allows it to vary depending upon what is being queried. And so too with Visual Basic.net, the option in for on will allow the query variable to change dynamically based off of the uh, query that is being performed. Now here is an example of a link query. Here we see we've def defined a query uh, variable, the Dean's List, and we're going to uh, go into the Dean's List and we're going to assign it our query, our from, where, order by, and select. This becomes the query, but it doesn't have data in it as such at this point in time. It is only as we come down and start to execute this area of the code in a for each statement do we actually resolve the Dean's list. And here we see we're taking the element of student in Dean's list 
and we're going through and picking out the last name and the first name. Now, there are other fields part of our uh, students' uh, collection, but we're only selecting two fields out of that. So you see, even here, this represents uh, more than just one element. It could be actually much more data being processed. So we're looking here to return back last name and first name um, in the process. And then as it executes this part, we actually resolve our dean's list and we're querying uh, at that point in time. Now, the important thing is we go back and start to look at doing a link query is to remember the basic format and the typical execution. We have our query variable that we define. And with option infer on, we do not have to give it an as statement uh, following it. Uh, it will dynamically change according to what we put in on our clauses. And you'll see that I have a from clause with a range variable. And then I have a data source. Then I have the optional where clause. Usually we'll have the where clause, but it doesn't have to be there. Where we have some condition or conditions that we want to check. And then we have the uh, result uh, area coming back. It could be an element or uh, much more uh, coming back. We can ch actually shape and transform the data as well. And typically, the execution is in a for each uh, next type of uh, looping. Uh, but it can be in other ways we process the data. We're going to perform some kind of action, perhaps outputting it to a screen or doing something else with it as we're processing through the query variable and at that point resolving the data within that query. So remember, as you start your learning about link and link query, the basic formats, the range variable, the data source, the from where select clauses, our query variable, and then remember that we have what's called uh, deferred execution. And this is, does not have a value until we start to process the data. So I hope you'll take a look at link, learn about it, uh, get better understanding of it. And one of the things I'd like to draw your attention to is that you need to go out and learn more about link at Microsoft's site. And here is the actual uh, URL to the site where you can learn more and get started learning about Visual Basics version of Link on that. So please go out and take a look. This is a great new part of coding. Uh, it allows uh, both the C Sharp and the Visual Basic.net environment to have more power and ease of coding, making you more productive and less prone to some kinds of errors that could be introduced in your code. So start to learn a little bit about it. Watch the next video where we're going to do link to objects. And you'll start to discover that even when you're working with a simple array that might be used to, with the power of link, we can do much more very efficiently to query against our array. We'll also take a look at uh, a collection. We're going to process against a user-defined um, class that's in our collection. So please come back. Take a look at the next video. In the meantime, go out to the site at Microsoft and start to learn about uh, Visual Basics version of Link on that as you study. Many of the examples that you'll see when you query on the internet are for C Sharp. But Visual Basic also supports Link. And once you start to learn how to see the translation between C Sharp and Visual Basic, it's not difficult. And in fact, you'll find out that Visual Basic.net's version of Link actually gives us more extensions, which we'll talk about later, uh, to process data. So take care. Get your hands dirty in the code, as I say. And until next time, keep coding.